Hello and welcome to Reality TV Cringe. I am one of your hosts, Delia, and I'm here with my world tight homegirl and my daughter in law, Beatrice. What up, everybody? We are here to break down and get into Vanderpump Rules. Now, of course, last week, I was sick. Yeah. I was laying in bed. It was crying. Dying. It was rolling around. It was a terrible week. And so we were not able to meet up with y'all and talk about last week's Sorry episode about of Vanderpump Rules. But this week we'll do like a little recappy poo of last week's episode. Nothing too long. No. I've already forgotten what happened in that episode. There wasn't much. Yeah. Um, and then we'll get into this week. So I'm excited about it. Me I have too. Some things to say to you about it, Beatrice. Girl, Are you ready? I got some thoughts. Okay, good. Does it hurt when you think? Yeah. In that big old head of yours? I kind of get a little hot up top, you yeah. know, when I'm thinking too hard. <laughs> like your brain is firing. Yeah. Like something's happening out there. I yeah. don't know what it is, but something is happening yeah. up there. I love it. Before we get into that, though, we do have to give you a disclaimer. Please hide your wife and hide your kids. This is a politically incorrect podcast, which means we say stupid things and we are not going to apologize. No. And so if you're sensitive... And if you like podcasts that are massaging your fifis, this ain't the podcast for you. Let Get me just put it here. right out there. But if you are down and if you're cool and if you just like to have nuanced conversations about reality TV, well, I dare say this is the dumpster for you. Welcome. Yeah, welcome. And if you are down and if you are cool, you better be going to Instagram and following us at Reality TV Cringe and join us on Patreon, patreon.com slash reality TV Cringe. We got a bunch of bonus content up there. We're going to start reacting to the newest season of My 600 Pound Live. Can't wait. Literally oh, cannot wait. I can't wait. It's going to be so good. So good. And if you are watching on YouTube, please don't forget to like and comment, share and subscribe. Every single thing that you do helps us to grow the community. And so thank you in Ed Van. Thank you. Now, before we get into the episode and talk about it, I do know that Tom Sandoval <sighs> did something extremely stupid this week. Yeah. Which we should probably spend a few minutes talking about. This dope cannot <laughs> keep his mouth fucking shut. He's the worst. Oh my God, he's such an arc. I, I can't with him. He's got to go on everything. In the world, does he think... That it's appropriate to say and do the things that he says and does. It's crazy to me. So obviously we are referring to the New York Times article mm -hmm. that came out on Tom Sandoval in which they were asking him a bunch of questions. And quite frankly, I didn't read the whole article. Me neither. I just saw the blurb in which he talked or he compared the Scandoval to OJ Simpson and George Floyd. Why don't you read the quote just so yeah. that everybody gets on the same page? This is specifically what he said. He said, I am not a pop culture historian really but i witnessed the oj simpson thing and george floyd and all these big things which is really weird to compare this to that meaning his affair to that i think but do you think in a weird way it's a little bit the same so he's <laughs> equating the affair coverage mm -hmm. between him and ariana to that of oj simpson and, and george, george floyd because it had the same notoriety uh, but it, but I'm it like, did it? it? Did we it? weren't out here protesting no. for um, Tom Sandoval or no. Ariana Maddox. Like, what legitimately, what are you talking about, my guy? His head is so big. Like, he thinks he's so fucking famous that he's on the same level as OJ Simpson and fucking George Floyd. Dude, who's managing him? Like, who's your PR person that thinks it's okay to send you out, I don't know, unaccompanied to talk to the New York Times to stay to say stupid shit like this? I don't like, know. Like, he's been on podcasts and made a total ass out of himself. Mm -hmm. I know last year when Scandaval was happening, he went on the Howie Mandel podcast what? to give his version of what happened. Oh. And I know that he really pissed off Andy Cohen and Bravo by doing that. Really? Because I think Bravo prefers to send representatives with you and to kind of help you to curate what your message is like going to be it. yeah yes mm. but tom sandoval did it all on his own he embarrassed himself and he continues to embarrass himself i don't even know how you come up with a thought process that gets you to a, 
a quote like that. It doesn't make any sense to me. It's kind of giving Cody Brown vibes where like the more he says, the dumber he fucking looks and the more of an asshole he looks like just shut the fuck up. Yeah, you don't have to speak. No, you don't have to be in an article. You don't have to be on a podcast. You could just shut up. Yeah, nobody wants to hear from you anyway. Mm -mm. But then after all of this came out about the New York Times article, people were obviously mad about it because they found his comments to be very offensive. So then he posted a bullshit Instagram apology on his story and he says my intentions behind the comments i made in new york times magazine were to explain the level of national media attention my affair received the comparison was inappropriate and ignorant i'm incredibly sorry and embarrassed okay there's i mean i mean i guess i don't get it i'm you're just covering your ass because you look like an absolute dimwit yeah not just that but like um you're you're damaging I think other people. Yeah. And your your damage and also this is happening during Black History Month. And right. so this is a time of celebration <laughs> right, and where people are <gasps> focusing on black history right. and you're invoking these two things that happened in our um American consciousness wow. that has nothing at all whatsoever to do with you and you're comparing yourself to it. And it's just I don't understand the reasoning behind it. It's pretty crazy. I mean, like I understand you talking about how crazy this affair got and like the coverage and everything i mean everybody was yes it was crazy it was insane. nuts yes i never even watched vanderpump rules and i knew yes what had happened last year when this came out so like i get it but at the same time i'm like why are you comparing it to oj simpson yeah, and you George didn't Floyd? have to do that no that's crazy you know and my ultimate question is like when is it going to be too much for bravo like mm. too much of a liability to have somebody like tom sandoval who has just a fundamental inability to take real responsibility for the things that he does right like how much more is he gonna do to give your network a black eye and how much are you gonna put up with yeah it really feels like like there's nothing he can't do. Right. And then you're going to try and force a redemption arc on right. the show. It really feels like that. And that's what it feels like. And I, I'm, I'm sorry, but I'm not going to have sympathy for him because you made your fucking bed, dude. And you're making an ass out of yourself still. Right. Like, it would speak volumes. Like I say with Cody Brown, it would speak volumes if you just took ownership and took real accountability and responsibility and humbled yourself. But you can't because you're a narcissist just like Cody Brown. So... You're just going to continue being dumb. Yep. But I mean, it's great for us because it's content. It is content. But I mean, I, I'm really, I'm I'm just disappointed. Well, yeah. I, I think that's in just, Bravo. Uh, uh, yeah. No, no, in him. Oh, yeah. And just continuing to give him like platform after platform for him to be a complete asshole and really not take any responsibility for the things that he's done. I mean, like he does say the words. He's like, I said, I'm sorry. <laughs> like, yeah, it's a problem. I shouldn't have done it. But mm -hmm. and then he starts what abouting and bringing in other people like he did with James, like what James did to him 10 years previously. Like, what about that? Like that tells us all that he's not actually taking real authentic accountability for the shit that he has done. And like, for example, Ariana, a lot of people are saying Ariana seemed very discompassionate when Sheena was talking to her in the pool party um, when she was talking about, you know, Lisa Vanderpump telling Lala and Sheena that Tom is in a really dark place and yeah. obviously referring to potentially unaliving himself. And Ariana was just like, mm, yeah, no, I don't feel bad for him. And in the after show, she's like, you know, he brought this all on himself. Mm -hmm. And I can, so I can, we can have a conversation about whether that approach to how he was feeling at the time is merited or not. But at the same time, I'm just like, if you could have just owned it for real mm -hmm. and spent some time trying to think of how to demonstrate changed behavior right. or like how you could get to a place where you could change your behavior and then showing people that like you wouldn't have this much lack of compassion right across the board with your castmates and with America. Oh yeah. You would win back your fans and your friends back. Like it, you would completely change a lot of things yes. for people if you actually took the accountability. Because we can tell when it's authentic. Exactly. And we can tell when it's not authentic. Exactly. So this is just like the hugest bungle. I know. It was terrible for him. It's so ill-timed. People already hate him. Mm -hmm. And people are just going to hate him more. Oh, yeah. The Reddit is exploding. Oh, people yeah. are being like, when are they going to fire Tom Sandoval from Bravo? Which, I mean, that's fair. But if TLC can't fire They're Angela or fucking Big Ed. Or Cody Brown. 
Yeah, they're not going to fire a fucking Sandoval. The most toxic characters on the network, they will not fire because they frankly bring in ratings. Yep. And honestly, I think a lot of us are watching this season of Vanderpump Rules because we want to see like, how does the friend group emerge after what's happened? Right. But... It feels, and I was reading on Reddit, a lot of people saying it just feels like overly produced, Mm -hmm. overly edited. Like, is this a Tom Sandoval redemption season? Are we all of a sudden supposed to be feeling sorry for him? Which is crazy to me. And it does feel like they're setting up Ariana to be a bit of a villain. Mm Mm-hmm callous right and just like looking in the mirror and just like yeah i don't care about (laughs) him i don't care about them like are you editing it that way so that we start to hate ariana yeah because i don't so far i'm like i don't well i never really fully liked ariana Mm -hmm. i I still feel the same way about her as i always have but i'm just noticing the editing and i think when you notice the editing on a show mm, that's an issue well and like episode three last week that we missed was entitled um what was it called you're not the queen of the group which was directed towards ariana so i think they Mm -hmm. are totally framing this season to be like no now let's hate ariana for being a bitch i think she's being bitchy but at the same time i kind of love that yeah i mean and i think she's entitled to yeah you broke your entire life with her yeah (laughs) you broke the relationship in the worst way you broke her heart Mm -hmm. um you also did damage to the innocent bystanders in the friend group and you did damage to Raquel as well you know what we're not talking about with Tom Sandoval by the way is how he recorded Raquel without her knowing while she was doing a sexual act they were facetiming I guess they were like having phone sex but over facetime he recorded her she did not consent she did not know and that is ultimately what Ariana Ariana found and that's how she discovered the affair but like how come we're not talking about about the non-consent issue and Whoa. having that on his phone against her will and or without her knowing it is against her will because she has since come out and said like what happened and I think she gave everybody a cease and desist so that they didn't disseminate that video because she had no idea that it was even a thing whoa and why aren't we talking about that this season like I want to talk about that yeah that would be interesting to know and oh speaking of Raquel in the New York Times article um him and Raquel are no longer together and right. he's dating another bitch. He's yeah, they haven't other- been together since. I mean, I think at this time in the show, Tom is just realizing, oh, I'm not going to hear from Raquel ever again. Well, in this most recent episode, he's like, I'm saving myself for her. Right. I'm still in love with her. But then in the New York Times article, you've broken up with her and now you're on to another chick. Mm-hmm. That's wild to me. He is a serial dater. He's a fucking narc. Yep. Mm-hmm. He's messed up. He's 40 something, which I'm just like, 41, Dude. I think. Narcs need a supply. Yeah, they do. They need fans. He's insane. Just a really weird, wild week. And I don't know how you recover from this, but he's recovered from so many other things that I'm not going to be a bit surprised when he does recover from it. We just keep it moving, I guess. I guess we'll we'll watch what happens. Yes. Yes, we will. Well, let's get into the recaps of the show. We'll do like a brief recap from last week's episode because there wasn't much that happened. The first thing that happened in last week's episode was emo night. Sheena being cringe as fuck. Uh, Living her pop star dreams. Right. Her screamo good as gold Ugh, cringe. performance, which was which was cringy, but they did seem to have a great time. They so seemed good like for they them. Had fun. And then Sandoval is telling everybody at his birthday party, all of his fake friends about what James did. Right. <laughs> He's like literally talking shit about James, which is kind of funny. Um, and then Sandoval goes to Pump where Lisa's closing everything down. And this is where he has a conversation with Lisa. She starts calling him out on his behavior his mm-hmm. shitty behavior and says you need to humble up and you need to accept ownership and responsibility and apologize like and actually mean it and he's like i am and i'm damned if i do and i'm damned if i don't lisa and you know what you don't understand how hard it is to have everybody in the world hate you and i'm having <laughs> some really dark thoughts right And so a lot of people think that this was an intentional manipulation on Tom Tom Sandoval's part because he knew full well that Lisa Vanderpump had lost her brother to suicide. And he knew by bringing it up and referencing that, that he was going to trigger Lisa into hopefully protecting him, which she goes on to do exactly that. Now Uh she's on a campaign to talk to everybody else about how they need to be taking care of Tom Sandoval because he has these dark feelings and he was thinking about unaliving himself. And I really feel like 
this requires um, a more nuanced conversation For because sure. as far as I'm concerned, anytime anybody says that they're feeling like that or that mm-hmm. they're struggling with desires or ideations in that regard, like you got to drop absolutely everything and pay attention to that person. Could it be a manipulation? Absolutely. But are we taking a chance? No. We're not going to do that. We're going to listen and we're going to be there and we're going to get them help if we can. Right. So I think that Lisa did the right thing to like perk up and to listen to Tom. But the way Tom was acting in that conversation, so petulant and like he was having a tantrum and he's whining. That makes me feel like it's a manipulation and it's a performance. Yep, 100%. And then in that episode, it was revealed that when he was doing his whole rock star dream before he went to New Zealand to film his dumb reality show, and he was um, performing at all these places, he was singing songs, talking shit about Schwartz, Mm -hmm. talking shit about Ariana. And so I'm like, okay, you said that you went on all of these performances because you needed money because you were so broke after everything broke out like after Scandal happened you were losing all these brand deals and all this stuff so you needed to make money but you were going out and doing that and then still talking shit about the people that you Mm -hmm. hurt and deeply affected and then you want us to feel bad for you like I have a hard time with that like I don't want I I want to be careful here because I don't want to invalidate somebody's really dark feelings and as somebody who's dealt with deep depression in my past and I've dealt with these same ideations and thoughts of unaliving myself, like I get it, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. It do, it, there's something about it that feels ingenuine, dis, mm-hmm. disingenuous to me. Yep. And I, I don't want, again, like I don't want to invalidate his feelings and him being sad and I get that. But at the same time, it's like you feel this way because of your actions. Mm-hmm. And th- this is the consequences of your actions of losing all of your friends, losing your life, like not losing your life, but you know what I mean? Like losing the life that you had exactly. that you built for yourself. Yeah. Losing all your money and right. stuff like that. So like that, I mean, that's just the consequences of it. And every time I watch this show, every episode, I look at Tom Sandoval and I'm like, I see somebody who's deeply extroverted. Like he gets all mm-hmm. of his energy and his life force from everybody around him. And I know that he's a narcissist too, but like he thrives on having friendships and having people like him and adore him. And so to have everybody hate him in the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's incredibly devastating. Of course it would be. I wonder, is it like if you're a narcissist and you get off on the energetic supply, does it make that much of a difference whether it's positive or negative? Like if it's still directed at him, does he feel like in his spirit that he's winning? (laughs) Do you know what I mean? Oh, like like the negative? Yeah, because like coming out with this quote from this week, equating himself to what happened to George Floyd, Mm. um, which is obviously a a terrible negative thing that happened. Yeah. Like, it's still attention though. He's still likening himself mm. to something like that. I just I feel like he still gets off whether it's good or whether it's bad. I think he's proud that he caused such a scandal you think in so? our American con- consciousness. Yes, mm. I think he's proud. And he feels like a celebrity. He feels like a rock star. I mean, that's an interesting take. And maybe he's so dumb that he thinks like all of these bad takes that he has will go over well and then when they don't and he gets more hate he's like oh fuck now i gotta fucking right. fake apologize again and pretend like <laughs> i actually care about right. other people's feelings yeah it's kind of interesting he's kind of an interesting person not like i like him but just no yeah fascinating. To, to observe and yeah yeah and to to check out and i really feel like in this scene with lisa vanderpump he's working her oh totally he's working her and i yep. think he worked her last season when he was talking to her and he's crying at the window, like that also felt like a big performance Mm -hmm. and a big work. So yeah, which is really sad because you should not invoke that Mm -hmm. kind of depression, trauma and feelings that so many people can relate to just to get yourself out of something. Oh, for sure. And I mean, I like that Lisa is caring about him. Like, I think that shows her character. I don't think she's doing it in like an evil manipulative way. I mean, I, again, like I don't watch all of the episode, all the episodes and seasons of this show. I haven't seen her on housewives or anything. Cause I know some people on Reddit are talking some mad shit about Lisa Vanderpump. They are not liking her right now. But I mean, I think it shows her character. Like she does care about these people as human beings. And so that's a good thing, but I'm just like, 
I think she did the right thing in the moment because whether she believed him or not, she right. stopped everything. She listened and she tried to take care of the situation. Right. I think that's just what you have to do when somebody says something like that. For sure. But the reason Lisa Vanderpump is getting so much criticism is because it does feel like, it does appear that she makes excuses for the boys in the mm. group. For example, James, who's just taken part in so much bad behavior toward yeah. other people toward himself but like she's made excuses and time and time again she's given him chance after chance she did it with Jax she's doing it now with Tom I mean she gave this business opportunity to Tom and Tom to open a bar with them called Tom Tom she didn't do that with Stassi she didn't do that with Katie she didn't do that with oh. any of the other girls so there's just kind of like this feeling with some of the people in the audience like well how come you're always writing so hard for the dudes but you're not not showing up in the same way for the women oh that's interesting i didn't know that yeah big yikes i don't i mean i think that's a fair critique i mean yeah for sure if that's what's been happening mm -hmm. um and then the last thing that happened in last episode was everybody went to sir and schwartz showed up sandoval was there all the girls were there but the biggest thing was the issue with schwartz and the girls because the girls were calling out schwartz for playing both teams essentially and still sucking Ta Tom Sandoval's dick and, mm -hmm. and still um, liking him as a person. And they're like, why? Right. Well, so Schwartz is inviting everybody to Tahoe yeah. after a conversation that he has with Lisa Vanderpump. So he's inviting the women there. Um, he's inviting everybody there and he's telling them, and I'm also going to be inviting Tom Sandoval. And this is where Ariana is just like, yeah, I'm absolutely like you're a piece of shit. <laughs> And I'm not going to be around anybody that's around my ex. And, you, you know, you're losing everybody's vote of confidence because you're stuck in this guy's dick. And I'm paraphrasing, obviously. Yeah. But she calls him out. And I think Lala calls him out as well. And this is where Tom Schwartz says, well, you're not the queen of the group. Like, you're not the one who says where we go and what we do. Like, I can extend this invitation and you don't have to go or whatever. But like, you can't stop anybody else from wanting to hang out with us, Ariana. Yeah. And Ariana was also kind of talking for the girls, too. That's why right. he was like, you know, you don't speak for everybody. And everybody at the, ta at the table, Katie and Lala, and they're like, well, well, we feel the same way she does <laughs> yeah like it's fine well but they end up going though right they're they going go to, to go tahoe, to yeah. tahoe i think this is in the next episode yeah so she doesn't speak for them in that way right um but he also called out her ego uh -huh. and in the after show he kind of went on to just talk about how it was around this time you know ariana's attitude is starting to change as far as tom schwartz is concerned mm. and she's starting to be a bit more bitchy and her ego is starting to come out and he in that moment he's just like i don't like it and so i'm calling it out wow did you think she was egotistical in that conversation not in that conversation no i don't think so i think she was calling him out for what he is because i was getting kind of annoyed with schwartz because i'm like literally the episode prior to this you were talking about how much sandoval fucked you over with schwartz and sandys and how you were feeling resentful for him and everything and i know he apologized but then you're immediately just like yeah we're i'm gonna invite him to tahoe and everybody should just be fine with it. Yeah. I'm just like, I don't know. And you've told me about how he kind of goes back and forth and he kind of like plays all sides of it and everybody kind of gets annoyed with him. Well, in his marriage with Katie, he was forever constantly doing that. Like right. going back and forth between Katie and Tom and his ultimate allegiance was absolutely hands down Tom Sandoval. And that's why he Pink. lost his marriage to Katie because at the end of the day he is a ride or die for Tom Sandoval I just can't stand Tom's simpering affect like he's trying to play this okie dokie yeah. kind of good old boy or whatever like I'm just a nice person here I'm bringing you a plant Allie and James and trying to pretend he's not actually really toxic AF yeah like if you watched the whole season last year you did right I did I watched so you saw two. them when they're in Mexico and how he goads her and how he yes. talks to her and talks down to her but he does it with this fucked up affect like he's a good person like he's a mm. nice guy he's not mm -hmm. a nice guy Mm -mm. And I think Ariana has his number. At the same time, I think maybe she was also a little bit presumptuous. Like, you don't speak for everybody. If this is how you feel, then tell us how you feel. Yeah. But at the end of the day, Sheena's going to end up going to Tahoe. <laughs> Lala's going to go go to Tahoe. And of everybody course. else is going to go except you and Katie. Yeah. Which this is, I think, the divide we're going to start to see in this friend group. Ah, uh, like Ariana and Katie versus everybody else. Yes, I think mm, so. Interesting. The other thing that happened last episode was they showed a montage of... 
Schwartz and Sandoval kissing from a prior season. <laughs> and I just want to reiterate <laughs> my gay conspiracy theory, yeah. which is that they probably hooked up a time or two in the past. I'm just saying. I don't think they I hooked think up. They Absolutely do. My gaydar not. has never been wrong. Really? Bitch. Tom yes. and Tom. Girl, they must have experimented a time or two. No, they I don't They all think get so. drunk. All this, this friend group gets yeah. drunk. If Lala can fuck James... <laughs> yeah. okay i think anything's fucking possible okay i bet i bet you <laughs> schwartz was sucking tom's dick oh one my night. god i'm serious make it stop i don't even want to think that's about my gay that. conspiracy if you get offended by it leave maybe that's why tom is such a ride or die for tom sandoval that's maybe saying. that's what's happening i don't know it doesn't make sense to anybody else but them because they got a gay love affair they're in love maybe Broke they're back truly mountain. in love yes okay. we'll just come out with it then i mean i would just fully be your support it selves, okay so. let's That'd do be it so great it would oh be. my god you would love that i would love that all right so let's get to this week's episode okay it's called dog days of summer all right and we start with james and Allie getting ready to host a pool party at their mm -hmm. house and while they're doing that lala and sheena go over to lisa vanderpump's mcmansion yeah in Villa Rosa. beverly hills it's oh. not a mcmansion it is a actual mansion. It is huge. It is a huge spread. Wow. Gorgeous. So rich. With lands and Beautiful gardens. windows. And miniature ponies. Crystals drawing. and Pomeranians everywhere. Yes. Oh my it's a gorgeous God. home. Yep. Absolutely gorgeous. And so they go to talk to Lisa Vanderpump. Um, and Lisa is like telling them, hey, I just had a conversation with Tom Sandoval. And I'm really worried about him because he's talking about thoughts of unaliving himself and you know my brother and I just want everybody to be nice to him. And Lala and Sheena are kind of hesitant towards it, but Lisa Vanderpump ultimately convinces them like, no, we should all be a little bit nicer to Tom Sandoval. Let's talk about whether we think Lisa did the oh. right thing by having this conversation with Sheena and Lala. Like, because in the after show, Ariana says something like, yeah, I don't think it's right to put his mental state onto these two girls that have nothing to do with his mental state. They didn't yeah. contribute to what led him into this mental state. And so putting the responsibility of taking care of him onto these two bystanders isn't really fair to do to somebody. Yeah, I would agree with that perspective. However, um, last episode, Sandoval was telling Lisa that the reason why he was having these dark thoughts was partially because of Sheena's podcast mm. and Lala selling the merch for okay. Tom Sandoval and stuff like that, which I'm just like, yeah, should the girls have been selling merch and profiting off of his misery? Yes. I mean, 100%. They're part of the show. I mean, yeah, I guess. They're part of the group. They should absolutely, and you know what? If it had been the other way around, Tom would have profited off of them. Oh, 100,000%. He would have not hesitated. Oh, yeah, totally. He would have been selling shit. He would have been singing about it. I mean, he was singing about it mm -hmm. apparently on his tour after all this stuff ha broke out. So yeah, that's probably why Lisa brought it up to them though. I was like, yeah, you guys have been a little hard on him. Yeah, so it sounds like she doesn't necessarily want them to be friends at the same level. Yeah. But if they could just stop their attacks on him. And maybe that refers to what they're saying in their podcast or what they're doing like on the side. I don't know. I Again, when you're talking about the nuance of it all, like, yeah. I can understand what Lisa is actually saying. And mm -hmm. I think if you do know that somebody is in that mental headspace and that you might be with your actions contributing to that, then right. I mean, you should know that. Yeah. And you should think about how you want to conduct yourself and right. really think about what might happen as a result of that. I think, I mean, I think that was good to have the conversation, but I also kind of side with Ariana. Like you can't really put all of that on them and put the responsibility right. of his mental health on them. Yeah. And I are agree. we putting the same amount of responsibility onto Tom Sandoval right. for taking actual ownership of the shit that he's done right. and finding ways to change and demonstrating that change to the group? Like, are we having those conversations though? Or are we just like assuaging and making him feel better because he's right. crying again at the window? Sad. Right. Right. I agree completely with that perspective, honestly, because I mean, yeah, He's going to be sad. He's going to be devastated. His whole life changed. But again, like it's all because of your shit. Like you did it to yourself. That, I'm sorry. Um, and then we had Sandoval while everybody's waiting to go to the pool party. Sandoval's going cold plunging with his fake friend, Billy, 
right. who I guess has been on prior seasons. Yes. People on Reddit are talking about how they hate her. Yeah. Nobody likes Billy Lee. Mm. And they didn't really like her when she was actually on the show probably, what, three, four, five years ago. Why? I think she was a hostess for a little while. Um, I don't really know why people don't like Billy Lee other than she comes across currently certainly as a, ca- a clout goblin. Uh, like she's inserting herself into frames and scenes while Tom is doing the cold plunge and she's just sitting there looking at him. I'm like, what are you doing in the room? What are you doing right now? It's weird and it's creepy. It's getting it creepy. Weird. Yeah. And she was kind of staring at him with these big eyes. And I'm just like, what is wrong with you? Just Hi, Tom. Yeah. It's fucking weird. She might be in love with him. I'm not sure. The rumor is... Sheena said it on her pod. Yes. The rumor is that Tom Sandoval and Billy Lee may have had a physical relationship in the past. I'm not sure if that was when he was with Ariana or not. Oh my God. Who knows? But I mean, I can kind of see it when yeah. she's sitting there next to the bath and just staring at him and trying so hard to be in the shot. I'm just like, oh, Jesus Christ. It's really cringe. Lady. Oh, and then I saw a TikTok of her on the Reddit. Did you see this? No. So she's got a TikTok. I guess she has a comedy channel and she's talking about being trans. And so I'm trans. Of course I do X, Y, and Z, which is the current TikTok trend. Oh, yeah. But everything she's doing is in Tom's house so she's in his kitchen she's in the laundry room she's in his backyard but she's acting in the tiktok like it's her own house and she lives there oh that's fucking it's giving stalker it's giving weird enmeshment oh my god that is a weird maybe they are hooking up on the side maybe I mean, if Tom's a serial dater and cheater, it mm-hmm. sounds like he's got a pattern of doing that. If he's dating this new bitch, what if he's cheating on her with Billy? <gasps> I, don't, I don't know. Oh, my God. The only thing that came out of that stupid cold plunging scene was that they were talking about Raquel. And this is where Sandoval is saying, yeah, I really miss Raquel. I'm in love with her. Like, we just had such a really good connection. And it wasn't even just about the sex. We just hung out a lot. It was really great. And I'm saving myself for her. Yeah, and so I don't believe this. <laughs> I think in Tom's mind, he's thinking it is going to be so awesome when Raquel comes back to the show and we're going to have mm. all of this drama and it's going to be me and Raquel and Schwartz against the world. And he's waiting for his ally to return. Uh. He doesn't know yet that she's never going to talk to him again. They're never going to be together ever, ever. So I feel like I feel like he's just waiting for her to come back so that he can change the dynamic mm. in the show and in the group. Yeah, to kind of further deflect the attention off of him. I don't think it's real love. Yeah, no. I don't think that he loves this girl No at way. All. How can it be real love if the foundation is just lies mm-hmm. and bullshit? Absolutely crazy. Then we get to the actual pool party. Lala and Allie talk a little bit about James's sobriety mm-hmm. because Lala is like trying to fish for information about it. It's kind of weird. She's like asking Allie, like, what was his rock bottom moment that got him sober? And she's like... You're going to have to ask him. Yeah, I'm not going to tell you that. That's private information. And plus, I can see the camera that's pointed right at my face. And I'm in a relationship with this person. Yeah. So what did you think of the question? I thought it was kind of weird. I'm like, why is she asking? Like, I know Lala is sober herself. Mm -hmm. And I know Lala and James have kind of a friendship, like a deep connection or something, as she calls it. Weird. But I just think it's like, why are you asking? Why are you asking Allie? Because I think Lala's entire identity is her sobriety and the breakup of her relationship with Randall Emmett. I feel like she doesn't have anything else. And she wants to be the patron saint of sobriety, which is why she also says things like, yeah, I don't buy your, you know, California sobriety or your sober curious stance. Like she's always got something critical to say about what sobriety is. And so I just feel like she's furthering this identity that she continues to try and cultivate of herself and I'm like I'm bored that's cringe I get it you're sober that's great yeah we have to talk about it every season I know are we going to talk about it every episode too and nothing is more like of a drag than somebody who gets sober and then calls everybody else alcoholics right and puts everybody down for Starts drinking. taking their inventory. Right. Yeah, every time they meet, it's like, oh, God. When you were the one with the problem. Right. And you're judging everybody else Correct. for having some wine. Okay. Um, and then Sheena tells Ariana in the pool about her and Lala's conversation with Lisa Vanderpump. And Ariana is kind of like, the fuck? Right. You want us to have sympathy for Sandoval? Really, bitch? And Sheena's like, well... Lisa Vanderpump has a point. Maybe we should be nice. It felt to me like Sheena was coming into that interaction, hoping that they would stop whatever they were talking about and begin to validate 
her feelings yes. about how this impacts her life, how how Tom's ideation affects her and how yeah. she feels about her own life. And they're just like not giving her the time of day. It, no. Ariana immediately was just like shaking her head. No, she's like, yeah, this feels like a manipulation. And in the after show, she's like, well, I guess it's really important to you that you're liked by somebody who's actually told you to your face that you suck and that they never liked you. Yeah. Sheena, this whole episode, mm -hmm. I'm like, everything she relates it back to her. Yes. Absolutely. You can really see it. Does she do that every season? I think she must have done quite a bit of it. I don't know. I always really liked her because she was an underdog, especially when the mean girls were yeah. around, the Stassis, the Kristens, the Katies. Like, it was always them against Sheena. And so I was rooting for Sheena. But yeah, she's always been vapid. She's always been narcissistic. It's always been about her. It's cringe. She continues to make Scandaval about her. Yes. And now she's making... Tom Sandoval's dark emotional state about her because in the after show she does talk about how she did lose one of her own friends that's sad to which is very sad and so how this is kind of bringing up in her all of these feelings and I think that's kind of what she wanted to talk about in the pool but she really couldn't even get that out because immediately Ariana and Katie are like we don't care no I do not care about that guy he brought it all upon himself and he can just suck my Dead. I don't care. <laughs> I think Ariana literally says like he didn't care about anybody else's mental health when he was doing all of the shit that he was doing. So why should we care? That's what Ariana literally says. Yes. I'm like, Damn, and that's girl. kind of, that's kind of cold. Okay, so at the yeah, so two but... things can be true at the same time. Like that's kind of cold. Like Ariana, you've just heard that maybe this man that you've spent nine years with and purported to love might be having some deep, compelling thoughts of unaliving himself. Like maybe take a breath and think about that before you say something. She don't but care. She is so over. She is just like I don't give a fucking shit. Oh, no. Nope. Speaking of which, sidebar. What? So also another thing that Tom Sandoval said in the article, I think it was in the article, was that the night that Ariana found out about his affair with Raquel, uh -huh. which by the way, again, was in the phone because he had recorded her surreptitiously. Yeah. And she was at one of his rock concert shows. She had his phone, had an intuition and went into it and saw it. Okay. Mm. That night, according to Tom, she beat the shit out of him. <gasps> like was physically like physically hit him whoa like she, he says she beat the shit out of me which people then said well i think you were filmed the very next day and there was like no marks on you like did she really do it but ariana actually references the lift driver yes who was taking her home was actually the same lift driver who took her home that night that she found out about the affair yeah she was talking about that with katie before the pool party and she was like oh my god does this lift driver not even realize how many people would want to talk to him right because he recognized her and said oh i recognize this house I brought you and your husband and you guys were fucking fighting in the back. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, I'd love to and see. And that's the same night Tom saying she was beating the shit out of him. Do we think she put her hands on Tom Sandoval? I mean, maybe. Maybe. But like, did she do enough damage to hurt him? I don't know. I don't think she hurt him, but he's kind of going on a bit of a smear campaign. Like he's really he invested in bringing down Ariana and I'm sorry, but that's a horrible fucking look. Like, I don't trust what you say if you're immediately trying to bash your ex-girlfriend mm -hmm. to take the heat off of you because you're a cheating asshole. Right. Like, I'm sorry. More seriously, if you have been humble this whole entire time and had been apologizing profusely and taking mm -hmm. ownership and responsibility for your part, then maybe I would listen to you talk about the dynamics of your guys's relationship how toxic it may have right. been how she acted towards you then maybe i'd be like oh, okay right i i mean i can understand it but yeah <laughs> you're not doing that you're just smearing her to take the heat off of you so that's where i'm like mm -hmm. that is a really good point because i honestly feel like he has valid complaints concerning their relationship i do believe that they were probably not having a lot of sex. I do believe that Ariana and her resting bitch face mm -hmm. was probably pretty stink to him from time to time and talked down to him. I do believe they weren't happy and that that was showing up in the relationship. But you invalidate any argument you have. Yeah. You invalidate any position you have when you then go on to act such a fool. Exactly. Nobody's listening to you. All we nope. can see is the shit you're doing right now in front of us. Yep. And you look like a dick. You're an absolute dope. Yeah. 
And it's one year later and you're still, you're on the New York Times being an absolute ignoramus. A dumbass, honestly. I can't with him. And then after the pool party, like the day or two after, James ends up going to Lala's house. And this is where he talks more about his sobriety because Lala's like, I feel like we have such a special connection because I sat on his face and we (laughs) both got sober and we both were insane drunks before. And so, you know, I just want to encourage him in his sobriety, which is good. That's a good thing. Yeah, I think her concern for James is legitimate. Sure. Like she wants him to be healthy and successful. But again, I think she is projecting a lot of her own stuff and her own worry for herself onto him and yeah. actually onto everybody right now. Yeah, totally. She's projecting onto everybody. She's projecting onto Ariana because in the after show, she was also critical of Ariana. Was she? Yeah, she's critical of Ariana for still living in the house with Tom. And so like, how are you going to tell me I can't go to Tahoe? And like, there's this line in the sand. And if you're friends with Tom, then I don't want to be your friend, but you're still living in the same house with him. Mm, I mean, she's got a so, point. Yeah, Lala, but Lala is seeing her own situation. She is, yeah. In Ariana's situation, because Lala had to move out of the house. She got her own place. So her situation is similar, but it's completely different. But she can't see clearly in these no. types of conversations. So she's she seeing can't. herself in James. Well, I mean, I, I guess it's interesting, but I'm like, you shouldn't be putting so much on him while he's like newly sober like he's only been three months sober Mm -hmm. he's still smoking a lot of weed but he does talk about the reason why he got sober this time because last time he got sober he was sober for two years because Raquel issued him an ultimatum when they were dating right and so he started drinking again because he felt like that wasn't a good enough reason to be sober which I'm like kind of debatable Mm -hmm. um but he started drinking again and I guess him and Allie got in a bunch of fights yes after scandal happened and one in particular one fight in particular was so bad she left and went and stayed at her mom's house or something right with her live nights yeah with her animals and that was where he kind of hit rock bottom and realized oh fuck maybe i should get sober but he says this decision now is for him i don't think so this decision sounds like it's once again for the woman in his life who's giving him an ultimatum and putting her foot down if it weren't for Allie, if he were single again, I think personally James would be drinking again. Totally, yeah. I think he's got a party mindset. He's still smoking weed. Mm-hmm. He's still drinking weed sodas. He's yeah. still looking to be high all the time. He's still a problem. And I have to say, like when Raquel gave him the ultimatum, let's not forget that the, there are these allegations out at the same time of James being physically abusive. And Mm -hmm. remember when Raquel had to get her nose job uh, done again because um, James tapped it yeah, or whatever. Like, did he tap it or was there something physical going on? Is that the reason he decided to get sober? Because she's like, I can't stay with you. You keep putting your hands on me. You're acting crazy. Like, I don't know. I think James is a problem case. And I don't think he's accepting how much he needs to be sober. Yeah, I'm a little worried about him because I kind of liked him in season 10. I mean, I still kind of like him now. I feel like him and Ali have a cute relationship. I think she's good for him. Mm-hmm. I think she's got like a good energy for him and she could actually be like a, a like a really positive like balancing force for him if he is willing to actually like put in the work and stop being a piece of shit and stop being a drunk piece of shit. But that puts a lot of pressure on Ali. I don't want to put that pressure on her. I think she's a great girl. I think she's really cool. She's making the choice to be with him. She is. She obviously loves him. Mm -hmm. She's, I don't know if she's investing in this house with him, if he bought it or whether they purchased it together, but like they're together now. Yeah. And this is one of her stipulations and he is adhering to it for now. Yeah. I hope he actually means it when he says to Lala, like it's going to be forever. Yeah. No, he doesn't mean it. I'm telling you right now, James is a piece of shit. Ugh, that makes he's me a piece sad. of shit. He's a party boy. And if anything happens in his relationship with Allie, he's going right back to drinking. Uh, I hope not. So then we have Sandoval going over to Schwartz's house. And yeah. this is like kind of a brief scene. Schwartz is getting his hair cut from some rando girl Joe. or whatever. Well, that was interesting, though, because last season it was rumored that Schwartz was actually with Joe. Now, he had just separated from Katie, but they were still married. I think what? Katie made a post on Instagram calling Joe a weirdo or a creep. Um, so there is just some rumors mm. out there saying that they've actually been together, although Tom Schwartz denies that. But I don't he know. Does. Yeah. He says they're just bros. They're friends. Mm. Okay. Tom well, Schwartz is a liar. Yeah, he is a bit of a liar. Um, but the whole reason why Schwartz goes over 
or no, Sandoval comes over to Schwartz's house is so Schwartz can invite Sandoval to Tahoe and Schwartz or Sandoval is like, sweet, I have friends. <laughs> I'll go to Tahoe. And that's pretty much it. But Schwartz does call Sandoval out and says, you need to leave your fucking ego Attitude. at home. Because he immediately starts talking about Lala and Sheena yeah. and the shit that they did that pissed him off, which again is them going on their respective podcast and talking mad shit about him. And he's like still pissed about it. I know. How they profited off him. So he's still not even thinking in his own best interest. Like, honestly... I understand why he would be upset that they completely exploited the fuck out of his situation. Mm -hmm. Again, I think he would have done the same if the roles were reversed. But yeah. I can understand him feeling that way. But it's like not the time or the place right now to go to Tahoe, which it feels like he's setting up to do. Oh, yeah. Is go to Tahoe and then start fighting with these girls about <sighs> their part and how they acted badly. He's just like so incapable mm -hmm. of just shutting the fuck up yes. and being humble and just being like, you know what? You guys are all right. Like, I'm really sorry. I just want to be here with you guys. I just want to have a nice time. He can't do it. No, he can't. And I think he literally says to Schwartz, like, they don't know what they've done to me. And Schwartz cuts him off and is like, stop. Like, this is a bad You need to stop. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, I'm literally trying to be a bro for you and help you out with your fucking image. And you just keep ruining it because you got such a big ego. What was his sign again? I forget. I was just I was just trying to remember. Like cancer or something? I don't I don't remember what let's take a pause and let's okay. look it up he's a okay. cancer he is a cancer aquarius moon though aquarius moon but that's so intriguing and cool mm -hmm. that's right i remember being stupefied by his zodiac yeah but aquarius is a fixed sign so it can be very fucking stubborn just right. like a taurus just like a leo how dare you i'm just saying we're okay. both fixed <laughs> But he's a cancer. I always just feel like cancers are just hearts with hands and feet oh, walking around. The, you hate cancers? Oh. Why? I mean, no offense to any cancer lis listeners. Mm -hmm. I think it's because I'm a Leo. So yeah. I'm like, cancers are just so emotional. Water signs in general are mm -hmm. just like so, yeah. so emotional. God forbid somebody feels something, Beatrice. I mean, I feel too. Do you? Yeah. You're an automaton. I feel. I've got big emotions, but like calm down a little bit well i'm wondering if tom sandoval is shadow cancer yeah. like he's using his emotions as a fucking weapon yeah trying to be like toxic totally. emotional weaponry yeah yeah that's what it feels like to me it doesn't feel real no with him at all i wonder what his rising is i'd have to figure out yeah, what his rising I would love is to know what his rising is because that's who he really is totally yeah 100 percent. probably a fucking sag oh. or a fucking scorpio probably something <laughs> fucking crazy my husband's a scorpio your wife's a sag yep <laughs> but we love him we do of course <laughs> anyway and then we have a weird scene with sheena and brock going on a double date with james and ally god i hate brock I know. He's kind of a dope. I mean, he doesn't do anything. He's really innocuous. Clout he seems goblin. pretty neutral. But yeah, it's the clout goblinness of it all. Yep. And just like forcing himself into scenes like Billy Lee. Like, I'm like, why are you here? I know. What are you adding to this whole situation? Like, get off my screen. Besides making your wife feel bad for having anxiety right. about leaving her child with strangers. And yelling at her in front of other people and also America. What a Dope. I don't like him at all. I don't like him either. But the whole scene, this whole scene was just about Sheena talking to James and Allie about being nicer to Sandoval because Sandoval's mental health. Right. <laughs> His mental health. And then the last scene, which is like the best scene, in my opinion, of this episode, which was James going over to some dog salon. Does Lisa Vanderpump own a dog yes, salon? Yes, it's okay. called Vanderpump Dogs. Like Lisa Vanderpump loves animals. Yeah, she's got a new And pumps. she's got like mini ponies yeah. and she's got doggos oh. and she loves animals. She's very charitable toward animals. That's great. So she opened her own Vanderpump Dogs and she does really have a heart in this way. I was wondering. And so Raquel and James got a dog together yes. named Graham, who's a little golden Graham doodle. Graham Cracker. Graham Cracker. And when they broke up, Raquel took Graham and ultimately would not let James see or be around. That's so fucked. Graham. And what ended up happening, I guess, is when she went to rehab for her mental health due to Scandoval, I think she surrendered the dog or maybe she gave the dog to her family and then the, the dog bit somebody. And so then maybe the family called the rescue or I don't even remember. I don't know if what they're telling us right now is actually accurate, but somehow or another, I do think Graham was going to end up at the pound. Yes. Like at the pound. Which is fucked 
up to me. I'm like, that's really sad that Raquel takes this fucking dog who she knows James was like super attached to and loved. He doesn't stop talking about Graham Cracker. Right. I mean, every episode, I swear to God, he's like, I miss Graham Cracker. And she takes this dog and then gives it to her family. And then the family just gives it away to a fucking foster home. And then the foster home is going to put him in a pound. Like nobody thought to just contact James and be like, hey, do you want to take Graham Cracker? Yeah, that sounds very petty and punitive. Hella like you could have literally just called him and he would have come and pick, picked up the dog. But instead, you're willing to surrender this dog to a kill shelter. Yes, but thank Graham God. Where could die and be euthanized. No, for real. And thank God Lisa Vanderpump hears about it somehow, some way. The foster family calls, I think, Lisa Vanderpump. And she they goes, do. I think the foster family, or maybe it was the pound. I don't know. But somebody calls Lisa. She yeah. mobilizes. She goes and gets Graham. <sighs> And then she calls James. James comes in, is surprised, and yeah. he's able to take Graham home. He fucking cries because yes. he's so surprised to see Graham. Well, Cracker. can you imagine if you like lost custody of your little Luna and I'd you never got to see her pissed. again, and then all of a sudden she's at a kill shelter? Oh my god! On my the heart. verge of being euthanized. Oh, I would never forgive myself if I like if I didn't mm. find her in time. Like I'm so glad that Lisa Vanderpump took it yes. took graham cracker and fucking gave it back to james and james is like i'm taking him home right now right i'll talk to al about was, it later that was a beautiful thing i thought that was super sweet and i thought james was super happy yeah it's like i've been missing this dog and i just was kind of side-eyeing raquel a little bit i'm like really uh, a little bit and even though she's in rehab you cannot tell me somebody didn't consult her about what to do with That's graham if it was her family who surrendered graham to a foster like somebody told raquel first yeah and so Raquel must have known and she could have very easily said call James yeah I'm sure he will come and get the dog yeah that's so lame and like no wonder Graham Cracker was having behavioral issues and mm -hmm. biting people because he wasn't with his normal fucking family right. and his parents and stuff so like now that he's back with James and the preview it kind of looks like he's <laughs> gonna give their cats some trouble but I'm I'm happy for him I yes but I think really in great. the after show they are talking about how is Lala talking about how James has his family now? He's got Graham and the two cats and everybody's kind of getting along. That's great. And it's all working out. So he's happy. That makes me so happy. Yeah, me too. Your daughter and I always talk about that. I'm like, we can never break up because number one, we have four animals. We right. have three cats and a dog. Right. And we always joke about like how we would divide custody of mm -hmm. them because I'm like, well, <laughs> I want two of the cats and, and Luna. So you get yeah. one cat. <laughs> and she's Of like, her choice? Like, is it? a cat that she can choose or like are you going to give her the cat that you want her to have oh i would give her her cat that loves her the most which is bob with bob yeah it's not key well she loves key yeah. and she's like i would take her and i'm like no but she's the best cat ever <laughs> i wouldn't be so devastated it's so funny i do the same thing with my husband we talk about <laughs> um the dogs that we have and who would go with who and i'd be like i would take all your dogs i would take your firebird yep. i would take all your trust everything i would take this house that was passed down to you from your grandparents i would take this house and then i would just sell it to be petty i would take it off i feel like he'd let you do that too. and your little dogs too <laughs> <laughs> that is so sad though i know poor graham and he's like oh he's back home i know i'm so happy about that Thank goodness well what were the previews like do you remember what we were what's coming it up the tahoe trip brief. is coming up yeah the tahoe trip when I, which i'm excited about because that seems like it's going to be drama malicious and then james and ally dealing with their new animals and stuff and that's about it. Like, it was very brief in the mm -hmm. previews. Okay. So, but I'm liking the season. Are you? Yeah. Some people are saying these episodes are boring, but I'm like, yeah. I mean, most of these talky talky shows can be boring, but you got to read between the lines. Yes, you do. But when you compare this season to last season and everything that was happening, it's a little lackluster. Between Katie and Tom Schwartz and Raquel and Tom Schwartz and Raquel and Tom Sandoval and people starting to read between those lines yeah. and like the ultimate scandal. Like it was such a groundbreaking winning season that this one was always going to pale in comparison. Like they kind of set it up to a little bit like people to question whether it's good or not yeah i just hope it picks up steam a little bit like there needs to be some more drama is it really just going to be about whether the group's going to talk to tom sandoval for the rest of the season i know if you're really going to try and make us feel sympathy for tom sandoval then i'm just going to be like uh, i don't want to deal with that and if you're going to try and vilify ariana i mean i like ariana so far yeah, I'm, she's all right. I know you right. don't like her, but I'm liking her bitchy phase. I, I mean, I don't fucking blame her for being a bitch. Not one bit. She has every right to be upset. 
I mean, I would be to take her time getting out of that house and to do it in a way that she benefits from the most. Like I'm 100 percent for that. But I do want like I do. I just want there to be more transparency. I'm waiting for the conflict in the group. I'm waiting for Lala and Ariana to get into it. I'm I'm waiting for a little bit more of that because right now these are kind of boring episodes. If you ask me, I don't care about your pool party, really. Yeah. Yeah. I don't care about I love Graham, but I'm like, I let's get to the meat of the matter. Yeah. And maybe they're building up to it. Maybe. maybe Tahoe will be kind of the catalyst and then it's going to start going downhill from there, which one can only hope. <laughs> we shall see, my friend. Yeah. Well, this was great. Um, any final thoughts about Vanderpump before we get on out of here? No. No. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done. Every single thought I've had in my head, it's gone. I'm tapped out. Yeah. I feel the same way. Yeah. <laughs> well, we will be back next week, obviously, yeah. to talk more Sister Wives. And we have one more episode, Jesus, I Mary, think. and Joseph of 90 Day Fiance. And of course, we'll be back to talk about Vanderpump Rules. Until yep. then, is there anything else that we should say to these beautiful raccoons, Beatrice? Well, if you love our podcast, I sure hope that you like our videos on YouTube, subscribe to our channel, and then go to your favorite podcast platform and leave us a good five star review it really helps us grow the pod so thank you so much and until next week do not forget that we've got nothing but love for you and peace out bye